Once upon a time, a long time ago, a girl named Chandra lived in a small village in India. Chandra loved elephants. She also loved numbers. So of course she loved all numbers to do with elephants. Two tusks to polish on each, eighteen toenails to clean, a hundred scrubs on a side at each bath. Chandra had many chances to think about elephant numbers because she had a special job. She was the bather of the Raja's elephants. Chandra liked other numbers too. As she walked past rice paddies, muddy after the harvest, she counted the snowy egrets that flew above her. She passed through the marketplace at the edge of the village and stopped to help the spice peddler count change. When she joined her friends, where they stood watching the Raja's elephants parade through the town square, she remembered every elephant number she knew. Then she started thinking about rice. It was rent collection day, and bags bulging with rice hung from the sides of the elephants. No wonder the people looked sad. The Raja had taken so much rice for himself that the whole village would be hungry. But this was the way it had always been. For thousands of years, the villagers had farmed the Raja's land. For thousands of years, he had come with his elephants to take most of the rice harvest. The whole thing made Chandra angry. But what could she do? On the elephant's next bath day, Chandra packed up her equipment and walked over the fields to the palace. She was about to enter the gates when the guard stopped her. You cannot come in this morning, elephant bather. The elephants have taken sick. Chandra peered through the bamboo gate into the elephant yard. There, she could see her elephants lying on the ground, as still as felled trees. No amount of calling, singing, or cooing made them so much as raise their heads. Over the days that followed, Chandra sat watch over her precious elephants. She was not allowed inside, so she waited at the gate, watching medical men from all across the land come to cure the elephants. The first doctor sat on cushions in the courtyard and feasted. He ate eight meat pastries, ten chickpea dumplings, and twelve sand lobsters served on banana leaves at each meal. While he ate, the elephants got sicker. Another doctor spent all day and most of the night in the elephant yard, chanting and burning incense. The elephants got even sicker. Seven more doctors came and went, but the elephants got still sicker. One morning, the Raja returned from a walk in the gardens to find Chandra at the gate. Staring in at the elephants, what are you doing here, elephant bather? He asked. I worry about the elephants, she said. I love them all, and I know them well. Maybe I can help them. The Raja thought for a moment. Go ahead and try, he said. I need those elephants. Without them, I will not be able to carry the rice to market on market day. If you can save them, you may choose your own reward. The guard opened the gates, and Chandra and the Raja walked in silence to the elephant yard. Chandra approached Misha, the Raja's favorite elephant. She studied his feet, the nails, the pads, the cuticles. She studied his tusks and the eight molars deep inside his mouth. She studied the lips, the tongue, and the throat. She looked deep into his eyes. When Chandra got to the first ear, she discovered a painful-looking infection inside the ear canal. The other ear was the same. So were the ears of the other elephants. Chandra cleaned their ears, sang the elephants a soothing song, and went home.
At dawn the next day, when Chanta returned, the elephants were walking unsteadily around their yard. They greeted her with joyful trumpeting. The Raja was overjoyed. He declared a festival day and invited everyone in the land to the palace. The Raja led Chandra to the ceremony room. Piled on a long table next to the Raja's chessboard was a glittering array of gold necklaces, brilliant sapphires and rubies, diamond brooches, bags of gold rupees and other treasures. The guests began to arrive and soon the ceremony room was crowded with villagers. Name your reward, elephant bather, said the Raja. Chandra looked at the beautiful jewels on the table before her. She thought about her elephants and the hundreds of sacks of rice they carried away from the village each year. And then she noticed the chessboard. The villagers are hungry, Raja, she began. All I ask for is rice. If your majesty pleases, place two grains of rice on the first square of the chessboard, place four on the second square, eight on the next, and so on, doubling each pile of rice till the last square. The villagers shook their heads sadly at Chandra's choice. The Raja was secretly delighted. A few piles of rice would certainly be far cheaper than his precious jewelry. Honor her request, he boomed to his servants. Two servants brought out a small bowl of rice and carefully placed two grains of rice on the first square of the board. They placed four grains on the second square, then eight on the third square, sixteen on the fourth square, thirty-two on the fifth square, sixty-four on the sixth square, 128 on the seventh square, and finally, 256 grains of rice on the eighth square at the end of the row. Several servants snickered at Chandra's foolishness. For although 256 grains filled the eighth square completely, they amounted to only a single teaspoon of rice. At the first square of the second row, the servants stood awkwardly, not knowing how to count out the rice. The next number was 512, but that was too high to count quickly, and besides, it was too many grains of rice to fit on one square of the chessboard. Chandra started to explain. Since you had one teaspoon of rice at the end of the first row, why not just put two teaspoons, but the Raja cut in, just keep doubling the rice, he ordered. You don't need to count every grain. So the servants put two teaspoons of rice into a bowl for the first square of the second row. For the second square, they put four teaspoons of rice in the bowl. Then eight teaspoons of rice for the third square, and so continued, doubling the number of teaspoons each square. The eighth square on the second row needed 256 teaspoons of rice, which by itself filled another bowl. On the third row, the servant started to count by teaspoons again. But the Raja cut in. Showing off his knowledge of mathematics, he said, if the 16th square takes one bowl of rice, then the 17th square takes two bowls of rice. You don't need to count by teaspoons anymore. So the servants counted by bowls. Two bowlfuls for the first square, then four, then eight, then sixteen, and so on. The rice for the last square of the third row completely filled a large wheelbarrow. Chandra's neighbors smiled at her. Very nice, one of them said. This would feed my family for a whole year. As the servants worked through the fourth row, wheelbarrow by wheelbarrow, the Raja paced back and forth, his eyes wide in amazement. His servants gathered around him. Shall we bring rice from your royal storehouses? They asked. Of course, was the reply. A Raja never breaks a promise. The servants took the elephants and headed out to the first storehouse to get more rice. By late afternoon, 
the Raja had collapsed onto his couch. As his attendants fanned him with palm fronds, the servants started on the fifth row of the chessboard, and soon they were emptying entire storehouses into the courtyard. Within several squares, rice poured from the windows of the palace and into the gardens beyond. By the middle of the fifth row, all of the Raja's storehouses were empty. He had run out of rice. The Raja struggled to his feet and ordered the rice to be loaded onto the elephants and taken to the village. Then he approached Chandra. Elephant bather, he said to her, I am out of rice and I cannot fill the chessboard. Tell me, what can I give you to be released from my vow? You can give the people of the village the land they farm and take only as much rice as you need for yourself, answered Chandra. The Raja gazed at the mountains of rice that filled his palace and gardens, then out beyond the gardens to the fields the villagers farmed, stretching as far as he could see. Then he looked back at Chandra, the elephant bather. It is done, he said. That night, the Raja arrived in the village as Chandra and the other villagers prepared a celebration feast. Would you be so kind as to join me for a short walk, Chandra, he asked. I have a question for you. As they strolled towards the village square, the Raja spoke. I am a very rich man, and it took all of the rice I owned to fill little more than one half of the chessboard. How much rice would it have taken to fill the whole chessboard? he asked. If you had kept doubling the rice to the last square of the chessboard, all of India would be knee-deep in rice, said Chandra, and smiled. <laughs>